But I owe most of my musical upbringing, if not all of it, <clears throat> to my grandmother, my mother's mum. Uh, my dad wouldn't allow popular songs to be played on the radio. Um, in fact, if he could have blown uh, the headquarters up, I think he would have done. Um, he didn't mind organs, uh, church organs, that is. Or he, he would allow Reginald Dixon, which I think was big of him. But um, the rest of my musical, real musical education, I got from my grandma and, I must admit, my dad's father, my uncle Arthur. I had so much in common with him, and I owe him such a lot. He taught me to play mouth organ. He taught me how to yodel, yodel how about that, Slim Whoppet? Well, I am compared to Susan. Anyhow, the lines are very busy tonight, and that's a very good sign as well. Hello? 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 Is that Frank Whoppet? Yeah. Hold on, Frank, a minute. Yep. I've got a message for you. Okay. Hello? Hello? Who's that calling? Did you get the idea of that? Yes, yeah, my birthday today. Is that... it? Yeah, I'm really happy with the of the day. Yeah, and who am I talking to? Nat Canella. Hello, Nat. How are you doing? I oh, thought you'd be there to tell that old trumpet there. Uh, yeah, I'd spot that a mile away. Where are you speaking from, Nat? I'm speaking from home. From home? Lancashire. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I suddenly remembered it was your birthday. And I've got a few bucks to put in the, t in the telephone box, so I thought I'd pick you up. <laughs> oh, it's great to hear from you, Nat, because uh, you've got a lot of fans up here. Incidentally, we had Bruce Adams and his dad down, and they're down again today. Yeah, grand. Yeah, doing your numbers, of course. Oh, yeah, well, of course he would never, would never act without them, would he? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, when I put him on at the um, Opportunity Knocks, you know, uh -huh. he, um, he was doing Georgia then. And uh, and I think he was going into uh, a bit of sweet food, something like that, you know. Yeah. Any chance of you coming up here soon, Nat? Well, there we are, Nat Galera himself, who really surprised me uh, on the air. To He'd remembered it was my birthday. That was uh, the biggest and most pleasant surprise, that it was my birthday, as it is today. And the one recording I can't find anywhere. Chap called Dave Holmes. I gave him the original reel-to-reel uh, -reel tape, and he had the contents transferred to an LP for me. But of course, as it was a one-off LP, it uh, quickly wore out. And I can't find it anywhere, but I'll tell you what, it's priceless. It's Lou Stone and his wife Joyce singing Happy Birthday to You. Happy Birthday, Frank Whoppet and Joyce Stone says, Frank... I don't think we'd make it to your choir, do you? And uh, then there was some pretty rare material played after that. But that was Nat Ganella, bless him, one of the, well, he was the greatest trumpet star in Europe at, uh, in his particular heyday. And I had several of the great band leaders and people like that ringing up and singing Happy Birthday. I wish I'd found that Lou Stone and Joy Stone, because even if I find it now, it's going to be another year. And if I'm still here, I'll be happy. Right now, we've featured quite a bit of uh, the organ of the Empress Ballroom in Blackpool as well as the Tower Ballroom in Blackpool and whilst organs are not everybody's favourite instrument um, they are my favourite instrument only when they're playing in tempo. I, I've got to admit I, I can't stand the poet and peasant overture played on a cinema organ or anything like that but you know it's over 50 years ago that the BBC, the greatest radio innovators in the world, decided to hook up the Wurlitzers in Blackpool. Now then, how many Wurlitzer organs were there? Or two, you'd say, well, there was that big one in the Tower Ballroom. Well, the original Tower Ballroom organ was moved to the Empress Ballroom in the Winter Gardens, and they got a newer, bigger one. There's one in the Opera House, Yep, but altogether there were five Wurlitzer organs. Now, 50-odd years ago, when the BBC was broadcasting in mono and uh, in on medium wave too, so there was no such thing as stereo then or high fidelity either, the BBC sent its technicians out and they had the unenviable task of hooking up not just one Wurlitzer in situ in Blackpool, but all well, listening to the, the quality now from medium wave, well, you wouldn't know if there was one, two, three, four or five playing. And uh, I'm pretty certain 
you, it had to be in stereo and digital to at least hear them coming in and, uh, and what have you, and staying there as well. But this is a bit of history, and I'm very grateful to one of our listeners who has made this available to me. From the five places individually, and so to the big test. We're going to broadcast all five simultaneously, and the big question is, can all five keep together? And for you at home, can you tell which is which? Well, we'll start off one at a time and bring each place in at the end of one chorus in the same order as before. So I hope the five organists are ready and the thousands of people also, because here we go with the ball set rolling by Reginald Dixon at the tower. <laughs> identify the places as they come in. I'll call their names out and here to join the tower is the Odeon. because here's the Winter Gardens Forum. playing together, here comes the Palace Forum as well. Five organs and nearly 18,000 people all on the air together as at the end of this chorus we're joined by the Opera House.
Well, there we are, a virtual miracle, as no other radio station in the world could have done that over 50 years ago. We hooked up, the BBC that is, hooked up five of the mighty organs in Blackpool, together with a combined audience singing there of 14,000. 14,000 people in the venues of the five places in Blackpool. Like I say, with that monophonic, uh, not FM or anything at all, it's very difficult to tell how many organs, if there's more than one, were playing. But the the fact is, none of them played faster or slower than the other, or that would have been a real giveaway. But a piece of broadcasting history that you could not hear anywhere else.